Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I'm just gonna jump right into the videos from last week and start answering questions. The cats are fighting. Hey, Russell Cheddar, it's a little distracting. Anyway, the first video from last week was Caladiums, the new Christmas plant. And in that video, I had just received a huge load of gorgeous Caladiums. Uh, they were grown on at a facility relatively close to where we live, a couple hours away in Jerome, Idaho. And I was just so excited to show off all the varieties and kind of talk through um, some of the growing conditions and my experience with them and all that sort of thing. So. Uh, Carol asks, do you know if they are safe for cats? And that was a huge question about the toxicity of this plant. I actually have a note from the president of Classic Caladiums um, where all of these, well, lots of Caladiums. I don't know, how many varieties do they have? They're breeders and growers and yeah, like they're huge, they're out of Florida. He says they are not poisonous in the sense that they're not gonna kill you. So all aeroids, they're part of the aeroid family, which also includes Diffenbachia, um, Anthuriums, elephant ears, Alocasias, Philodendrons, Monsteras, Callas, all of those things are in the same family. They produce oxalic acid, which is an irritant. When you get aeroid sap on you, the oxalate crystals can abrade the skin, letting in oxalic acid, causing your skin to itch. The irritation usually subsides within an hour. So no, they won't kill you, but you don't want to get the sap all over you, clearly. It's kind of like euphorbia. Let's stay away from the sap. There are some, I guess, varieties of aeroids, like the elephant ears and then something else that I'm not familiar with, that are edible. Elephant ears are edible. You can eat them, but only after you cook them because the heat destroys the acid in the crystals. Oh, yeah. So the sap, he said, should be referred to as a skin irritant, um, mouth and GI tract irritant if eaten and therefore avoided, but the plant should not be listed as poisonous. So there you go, you heard it from the pro. Elizabeth said, what about drainage? I love your pots and urns, etc." Okay, so the container, I'm trying to remember what containers I put them in in the video. There were a couple like that gold, pretty gold pot. It does not have drainage in the bottom. So how you water that one, which th these are easy because these plants like to be pretty moist. So when I water, I typically, it doesn't matter if just a tiny bit of water collects at the bottom, the soil will soak that right back up. But if I were gonna be doing a deep watering, I'd wanna just remove the whole plant in its little plastic container, put it in the sink, water it, let the water drain, and then put it back in the pot. Um, the big concrete, uh, what's that one called? I'm like the capital. I'm like totally, it's the capital, right? No? Corinthian Gothic, <laughs> something I can't remember. It has a drain hole. So, and then the iron urn that I had the fast flash in also has a drain hole. So. Most of your plants will do better if you have drain holes in the container. Just be mindful if they don't. We've done lots of videos about um, non-draining containers. You can get away with it. Usually you want to be more of a, a seasoned gardener maybe or somebody who's not just starting out. I don't recommend non-draining containers for beginners because you really have to know how to read plants and know what their, their desire is in terms of water level. Um, and then you can almost, like I can look at a plant, I can walk by a plant in anybody's house and be like, ooh, that plant needs water or oh, that's got way too much water. Um, that needs to be adjusted and you get that way after some experience and even after some experience sometimes things happen and there's no explanation so anyway that was a really long answer that could have been really short <laughs> nikki said could you do a video on poinsettias that would be awesome we did one two years ago we will link it down below actually somebody just uh, messaged and said that uh, there was a little clip of our poinsettia video in a cnn video about a couple that got a really it's like titled crappy poinsettia plant like turns massive or something like that um, they were talking about how they, like, I don't know, grew this huge poinsettia. And it was about the pronunciation of the word poinsettia. Because in our region, we say poinsettia, and I think proper is poinsettia, which I cannot even make come out of my mouth. It sounds so awkward for me to say it that way. Anyway, they included the one clip of me saying it improperly. <laughs> Katie said, they're so gorgeous and full. I've never grown caladium, so I'm wondering if they can be kept indoors all year round, or do they need a dormancy period? They do go into a natural dormancy period in autumn, but these uh, caladiums that are grown on, specifically like right now for winter, for Christmas time, uh, their whole season, they are just forced to grow at a different time of the year. Um, so they were forced to grow on later on in the season so that they're ready to go for Christmas time and then they'll fall into a natural dormancy later on. But the caladiums that you've grown during the season that you're digging out, and maybe this is where I went wrong, Erin, like I should have forced bulbs later on because I dug those hoping to carry them over as house plants and I thought maybe my lighting was wrong or my humidity was wrong and my watering was wrong, which I think all three of those things were wrong, but I think maybe they were going dormant yeah, too. Right. So like maybe I can blame the plant and not myself. 
Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Charles said, I love buying holiday plants, but what's the best way to get them home? When out shopping and the temperatures in the teens, is it safe to bring warm, loving plants home? Um, you know, the only way that I would carry plants from the store to my car in the te in temperatures in the teens is to make sure that they have a sleeve around them. And most garden centers, I don't know about box stores, but most garden centers have a stack of paper sleeves or plastic sleeves that they'll put the plant down in for you so that, that it's kind of uh, protected a little bit from the cold and typically the walk from the car to your store to the car is not gonna hurt it if it's in a sleeve. As Shrata said, your house looks gorgeous with caladiums. Do you know how many corms are in uh, one of those pots to get that full look? I am not sure exactly how many, I would say between three and five. There were two different sizes that they sent over. So I'm guessing that the smaller size was six inches probably had three and then the bigger one had uh, five. Lois said your videos are most splendid and rewarding. Thank you. Would you kindly tell me what garden sites do you watch? Well, you know, recently on this channel, Garden Answer Highlights, we've been featuring some of those gardeners specifically in the realm of social media that have inspired me, motivated me, educated me, or helped me out in some way. Um, so there are people I feel like I want to pass on their information so that you guys can learn about them too and like, soak in some of what they're doing as well. Um, so I think we featured five or six gardeners now and we have a whole bunch more to come hopefully on this channel. It's just really fun to be able to highlight other people doing some of those things um, because we all do things a little bit different and we all have something to learn from each other. So all you really need to do is go back in the video like lineup on this channel and you'll find all of those people that we have partnered with so far. Ellen Jen said, does anybody else get a 52 minute advertisement? I usually watch all the ads, but 52 minutes is ridiculous, which I have to agree. Are there really ads that long? Um, you can skip them. Yeah, I would skip a 52 minute ad. Yeah, I mean, like sure. if you want to watch it, go ahead, but I would and I would skip it. Aaron was just explaining to me that if you want to watch content without ads, you can pay for YouTube premium, which is what do you say? Like $10 a month or something like that, something like that. Um, where you can watch any YouTube content without ads. And it does um, like kind of indirectly support our channel, like better than watching the ads actually, in most cases. Um, and it sure does make for a better experience <laughs> to watch through ads like that. So that is an option as well. Next video was decorating a tree for the children's relief nursery. And in that video, we just decided it would be fun to go down and pick up a new tree, take it down to the relief nursery, which is a, a local nonprofit organization here in our city um, that provides a place for kids that are um, kind of involved in stressful situations at home, um, like even including neglect and abuse and things like that. Um, it's a really wonderful, wonderful place. Anyway, I kind of explained more about it in the video, but we thought it'd be fun to take a tree down to their lobby, decorate it. I had tubs full of snowman decorating stuff, decorations uh, from a previous dollar store tree challenge. And I thought it would be fun to share that with them. and. Um, let them enjoy it this season. Jennifer says, I always wonder if this place knows who Laura is and about her online following, or are they just like, sure lady, record whatever you want. <laughs> I also wonder if people in her town know what she does and who she is online, uh, that they have a local celebrity. I don't think many people know <laughs> in our town. We're pretty, nice. it is nice. We're pretty an anonymous. Is that the right word? Yeah. I don't know, but um, I do know a gal who works down at the Relief Nursery. And it's funny because I have been talking to Aaron like for months about how I felt like I needed to get involved. I needed to get involved and help, the, help these kids out in some capacity. And sometimes it's hard, like you feel that urge and you feel that desire to wanna to help out. And sometimes you get, like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get like, I don't know how I would be helpful. Like what, would, what do they actually need? And it's hard to actually make that first step to reach out and actually start doing something like that. Um, but this gal, she emailed me. I had just talked to Erin about it the night before. And I'm like, Erin, I gotta do something. Um, I've got to get involved and she emailed me the next day and said, you know, I've just been really thinking about you and I feel like, you know, if, I don't know. So we just ended up connecting and uh, it just felt like it was meant to be anyway. Um, so they do know what we do and they're, they're super welcoming and super accommodating um, to any ideas that we have and we'll be doing some more things for them uh, in the future as well. Elizabeth says, do you have a video or could you show us how to make a ribbon topper like this one? Um, we have a ribbon tutorial online. Did I do that two years ago? Probably maybe two years ago or three years ago. We'll link it down below. Uh, Laura said, just curious, do you worry about being in a busy place while you are pregnant because of the pandemic? Nah. I don't worry about a lot. 
Uh, it, it, down there though, it was kind of perfect because they had a staff meeting that day. We were alone in the lobby and it's a no kid day. Whenever we do projects down there, we do it when the kids aren't there just for their, their privacy. And it does make it easier to move about. And I want to be respectful of, you know, the staff and their space. And I don't want to have like cameras coming in. That was the other thing. Like, um, I really wanted to make sure when we started to get involved, I'm like, I really want to share about this place because I feel like more people should know about what's going on here. Um, but I wanted to do it in a way that made them feel comfortable. But anyway, no, I'm not worried about being out and about. Two Acres Evolving said, it's so awesome that you help out in the community. How do you get started with community projects? Do you just reach out to different places? Well, I just explained how um, I got involved down at the Relief Nursery. I was feeling it. I really wanted to get involved, but I didn't actually make the first initial step. I was contacted by somebody, which was really nice because then you feel like oh, okay this is going to be like they'll help guide me and show me what they need and what would be good for them otherwise i think just reaching out um, and just asking the question like what do you guys need most where can i help out the most um, and oftentimes it's it's a step on your part to kind of step out and and get started that way saeed said love the trees guys just asking but do you ever feel self-conscious when you're filming out in public do you erin do you feel self-conscious? Well, I've never talked to the camera. That's, well, you're around me though. Does it ever feel weird? No. For you? No. It did in the beginning. Like for me, I felt so self-conscious and it was a, it's still kind of weird because I feel like I'm creating a total scene wherever I go, but I try to be a little bit, did the cat just jump up here? Oh. I try to be a little bit um, on the sly and I wait until if there's a crowd, I won't start filming. If there's a crowd of people around, I'll wait until it kind of dissipates so that I am making a little bit less of a scene in front of fewer people. Uh, Carol said, the tree looks so sweet and I, I bet everyone will love it. As a side note, what happened to the pots you planted up at the spray park in town? I know the area probably wasn't open this past summer due to the virus, but just wondered if you will still be taking care of that project or if you transitioned it to the people running the park. Um, yeah, it was closed for much of the season. I think they were open for a very brief window before they had to close down again. In fact, um, we were going to go help them plant and then we just decided like it was kind of a little bit too late in the season when they finally opened it back up. And I'm glad we didn't because they quickly had to shut it back down. Um, and you know, at this point, I don't know, we may be involved, we may not. It's not looking like it for next year. I don't know. We'll see yeah. what happens. Sharon said, are you decorating a little pink Christmas tree for your new baby? No, I actually stopped in my tracks at Joann's when I was there the other day. They have this section of kind of like little like kiddish looking ornaments and they had one of those ceramic trees, little pink ceramic trees with the little Christmas lights that stick out. And I, I thought for just a brief moment, I'm like, I should get one of those because that would be something really fun that she can have in her room from now on. But she's not supposed to be born until after Christmas, so I probably won't spend any effort actually decorating for Christmas for her next year. <laughs> and even then, I mean, I think we got to give it three or four years because, I mean, case in point, Benjamin's tree, he loves his tree. He loves it. It was worth it, but it wouldn't have been worth it any sooner <laughs> than this year. I think three years, it's three years old is probably like the youngest. And last question from that video was from Carrie. Uh, is there a wish list from the kids that we can send Christmas presents? I'm not sure that there's an actual wish list, but I knew, do know that they have a list of needs on their website. So we will link their website down below. That's really sweet of you to ask. Next video was planting daffodils in both of our parents' gardens and then a bunch of alliums in galvanized troughs. So we took 100 Casada daffodils to Aaron's parents' house and planted those. And then a bunch of Ice Follies daffodils that I had left over actually from a project that I thought I was going to use them all up. And I had close to 300 left. <laughs> Thought I had about 250, but I ended up having to dig a few extra holes, but we put those around in my parents' garden. It's my dad's favorite uh, daffodil. And then we came home and planted up three galvanized troughs, the ones we had on our new property uh, with Globe Master alliums. I think it's so pretty. Uh, so Tracy said, Laura, I've been told to put my nicer containers inside during the winter so they don't freeze and crack. Is that a good idea? And if you do that, can you still plant bulbs in them for spring? Um, it is a good idea, definitely to protect your concrete especially in terracotta containers from any extreme weather. It will make your pots last longer. You'll notice in that video, I had all the pots we planted bulbs in outside of our greenhouse, exposed to all the weather, all the things. I find that like last year in particular, my bulbs did way better being outside the greenhouse than in because it just stayed too warm last winter. So it's something we'll have to keep an eye on. 
If you are wanting to plant bulbs in those containers, you would need to put them somewhere where it would be between like 35 and I think 45 is the, the range you want the temperatures to be in consistently for a lot of weeks. So that would be something you would need to uh, make sure to have. Um, we'll go ahead and link a video down below. We just did like a how to plant bulbs in containers guide. So that might be helpful to you. Astrid said, are there drainage holes in the metal tubs that were planted with alliums? Yes. So those troughs come with a drain like built into the bottom that you can unscrew and it's a nice big hole at the bottom of the container. I did not drill extra holes. Last year I tried them out. Um, you know, we planted them up just using that one drain hole and they did fine. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, love me today. I need lots of love. Next question, aren't you concerned about toxicity of the fertilizers you are spreading and breathing while so pregnant? No. <laughs> Do you worry about anything? No. <laughs> uh, Margie said, holy moly, how are you going to move them and no drip tubing? Yeah, the drip tubing was a little bit of a, uh, I forgot, Erin. I forgot the freaking drip tubing, <laughs> um, which is not a big deal with those galvanized troughs because we're going to be moving them around. So honestly, like not, uh, I don't know, it'll be fine. Um, we did put those troughs in front of the greenhouse in such a way that we can drive the tractor right up to them and put those containers on the forks to put them where I want them to go next spring. Um, I had thought we initially, when we pulled those out, they were all emptied behind the barn when we got ready to do this project. We pulled them out and we were going to line them up against the barn. But then I thought, oh, we better not do that because I don't think we can get the tractor in there. It's gonna be too tight and we're gonna need to be able to lift him with the tractor. Um, Abby said, I'm sure this question has been asked before, but I was always taught not to fertilize young plant seeds bulbs when they were, went in the ground because it could burn their roots. Is this a myth? It's not necessarily a myth. I think it depends on what fertilizer you're using. It's certainly a thing. Um, you know, you don't wanna use a full strength fertilizer on young tender seedlings that have just come up. You'll wanna use a specific like, uh, starting fertilizer that's already mild and sometimes you even want to like dilute it by half um, to get them going. Uh, for bulbs and things like that when I'm using biotone and bulb tone those are specifically formulated for root development um, and so they're not super hot they're also an organic they're a slow breakdown. When you're using a synthetic it's a lot more nutrients available to the plants like right now and so you have a little bit more chance of burning roots or plants with a synthetic I think that over an organic um, so anyway, it's always worked really nice for us, the biotone and bulb tone when we're starting bulbs and or new plants. Not seedlings though. Seedlings I start in the seedling starting mix, no fertilizer. Once they're up and they have their first set of true leaves, that's when I start fertilizing with a liquid like starting fertilizer and I usually dilute it for a few weeks and then I start giving them full strength once the seedlings have gotten up and put on a little bit more beefy growth. Uh, Rhonda said, do you have any trouble with your unique stone containers cracking during the winter or do you winterize them in some fashion? I don't do anything to winterize them. I've never had a unique stone one crack. I don't think I have. No, never. Heard. I've had like two terracotta pots crack and it was during that, that really bad winter. Yeah. Um, and even then I put my, I leave my terra, some of my terracotta out, like in the vegetable garden. I mean, knock on wood somewhere. I don't want it to happen, but so far I've had really good luck. Uh, Tatiana said, I wanted to give my sister a blend of bulbs as a Christmas gift, but is it okay to plant bulbs around Christmas time? I didn't think of that. You mentioned it's getting late. Yeah, I still have a ton of bulbs to plant <laughs> still. Uh, I think as long as you can get a hole dug in the ground, you can still plant a bulb. So if it's Christmas time and you live in a place where the snow isn't like piled up on the ground or it's, the ground's not so frozen hard, you can still plant them. I remember my parents one year, they had a bunch of, oh, there's just cat hair flying all around me now. Let's <laughs> wrestle. Um, I remember one year they had a bunch of bulbs left over at the garden center and they didn't want them to go to waste. It was like January. And my dad went out with a crowbar in our orchard and he just like picked up, like picked <laughs> like this, not picked up physically, but picked a huge chunk of frozen soil up and like just kind of flipped it over. And my mom just like scattered the bulbs out and then he just put that big chunk of soil right back on top of the bulbs and they came up. So I think things are a lot more resilient than we think that they are. Um, and I'm still planting too. I just figure, you know what, <laughs> whatever bulbs I have left, I'm gonna probably tuck them into the root cellar because it stays cold enough in there to like forcing temperature. And I can always just pop them in, into containers in the spring and let them grow that way. I'm trying not to worry too much about it. <laughs> this year's just a little weird. Mythical family said, do daffodils naturalize in your area? Yes, they are really good about that here. Brandy said, I was watching Martha Stewart and she plants some of her bulbs in a broadcast method, kind of like my mom did that one time. She mixes several varieties together and then tosses them onto the ground and plants them where they land. Have you ever or heard or tried this method? What are your thoughts? I think that sounds really fun. 
just like mixed bag, like mixing them up, tossing them, and then wherever they lie, that's how you plant them. That's what would happen in nature. So I think it would have the potential to look really cool and a lot more natural. Well, colored blends, you know, they, they blend a lot of things yeah. together. Yeah. You know, so they're kind of already doing that for you. That's true. Yeah, color blends where we get most of our bulbs. She's like, she's like pushing her head out <laughs> so much right now on the side of my stomach. Anyway, uh, color blends offers a ton of blends of different kinds of bulbs. Like you can buy single varieties. Like I did mostly this year was a single variety thing. Um, but they do mixes where they've got three to five different varieties in a mix and you have no idea because they're like all tulips and all the tulip bulbs look the same. Um, so when you plant them, it's just a mixed bag how they come up. So anyway, I've been happy with their blends. Kathy Ann said, I love the trellises. The roses are near. Is that for support for them or are they for decorative purposes? They're for decorative purposes. And Katie said, do you think putting chicken wire over the ground once the bulbs are planted will keep the squirrels from digging them up? I think it will help tremendously. I think that's one of the best things you can do because you can put down all kinds of repellents. Sometimes uh, it depends on how hungry or like uh, mischievous the squirrel wants to be. They'll still kind of plow through that stuff unless you keep it on thick and put it on often. But chicken wire keeps them from getting down there. Uh, and it's fairly like you don't really see it. It's not like a bright color or anything. So you can lay it on top and then pick it up in the spring. I think that's a great idea. Next video was shaping the new driveway and other updates on the new property. We just wanted to show you the beginning of the process of uh, the driveway being shaped. It's being cut out. It's not quite done yet, but we were able to show you just in general what the shape is going to look like and some of the pl plans revolving around that. Um, there was also a new dumpster enclosure that we had built kind of on the far side of the new property so we could get it out of our old entryway. And the one that the one we already had in the, the old entryway has already been taken down. In fact, the people who built, Eddie, who built our new one, they wanted the scrap lumber. So they came and they took it away and it's gone and it looks so much cleaner up there. I love it. Ryan said, I dream of being a homeowner so I can shape a garden like you do. Will your cut flower garden be as big when you move it to the back corner or will you make it smaller after experimenting this year? It'll be just a tiny bit smaller. And it's only because we're making so much room or allowing so much room for a small orchard We'll have a shed or a greenhouse in the back back of it, um, as well as a composting system, a place to hide all of our pallets of soil and mulch and stuff like that. Um, and then I don't want it to come so far forward that it meets the driveway. I want there to be enough room to where we can get equipment around and not actually have to go into the lane. Um, it'll all make more sense once we start laying it out and like uh, marking off all the corners and such. Uh, Kim said, for me personally, I think it's a shame to put a highway in the middle of it all. Why not use one encircling everything? Um, I totally get that because it's like, well, you're kind of doing the same thing essentially. You're just making it bigger, you know, because right now our driveway, because this was its own piece of property and it was separate from that pasture, it made sense because it circled right in front. Um, but now we're trying to get rid of that driveway right in front of our old property because it does cut things off and it makes things very... Um, like not inclusive. It doesn't look like our two properties belong together. Uh, if we were to do a circling driveway, it would be really oddly shaped because you'd have to come out and then turn right, go all the way around. It just, it doesn't make sense to do it that way. Um, so that's why we decided just to make it a huge, big, like really like pleasing loop. When you look at it from overhead, it'll just be a nice big loop. Um, and it won't feel like it's a highway. It kind of comes across as one right now because there's nothing else out there but it won't once we have everything going and we have big shade trees and stuff like that. I think the idea too is that we want the road to be close, like within the garden, like you want to drive closer to where everything and is. closer to the house too. Yeah. Like it makes sense to be closer to the house and not go out in the back 40 to get all the way around the driveway. Right. So, uh, Katie said, I'd love to see the progression of the new property. How do you envision guests using the new driveway? I don't really know because, I mean, she brings up a good point. It seems like they would have a fork in the road decision to make whether to continue straight or turn left. Will you have a preferred driveway and will you install or plant anything to make the obvious choice? We're going to have to because I want people to go straight and I'm hoping that, um, because right now they don't. Nobody ever has. They always turn left when they come in our driveway. And I'm like, ah, don't turn left. Go right or go keep going straight. It goes all the way around either way. Um, but I like the flow when people just come in straight. Um, plus, I like the way that you see the gardens when you come in straight because you get to see across for side. You can see to the gazebo. Um, and I really like that view instead of coming this way. Um, so I'm hoping having one, the line of maples just on the straight will help people kind of like shoot them, keep shooting them straight instead of wanting to turn left. 
but we may have to put a sign. What would that sign say? Like continue straight? Yeah. Like circle driveway, continue straight? Yeah. That might or be. Or just this way. That might be really in. helpful. Yeah. yeah. So a sign might be the way we need to go. Aileen said, Aaron, will you be putting Christmas lights down the new drive? You know, we tried. We tried uh, on one of the maple trees and they're just not branched enough yet. It seems like all of their branches are just uh, smooth. There's not very many forks, so it's really hard to find places to prop your lights. The only way we'd be able to light them this year is if we wrapped them like this, in which case you kind of draw on the branches. And I don't think that's necessarily great for the trees. So I think we're gonna skip the trees this year, which is kind of sad. We were hoping to be able to do them this year. Um, but the whole fence line is swagged. Like there's a swag of lights and it looks really pretty. And uh, how much more do you have left to do? Uh, there's actually a lot of lights left. Well, you ordered a bunch more lights. Good. It's gonna be beautiful because I feel like it's, you've already done more than you did last year at this point. And you still say that there's more yeah. to put up. We'll do a tour at some point. I think you guys will love it. It's quite the, this whole area is quite the, um, quite the show. All of our neighbors get into it, all of them. I think every single house has lights now, right, Erin? Every single house? One even has one of those uh, shows that you tune into the radio. Yeah, I think the house right across from the Kia does it. Okay, so there's one house that hasn't put them up yet, but it's only December 1st, so. Um, Beth said, I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Why not get the excavator man to make a bit of difference in the levels rather than flattening, flattening your land even more? Look, uh, look how lovely your water feature looked. True. How much land do you have? Uh, it looks like maybe seven acres or so. Thank you. I enjoy your programs. We have 5.6 acres altogether. Um, in the back corner where I was talking about him leveling it out, we need it to be level because that's where the cut flower garden and orchard are going to be. So in order to irrigate properly and all of that, it needs to be flat. And I am not a huge fan of creating contour and, um, and or like big water features that have big boulders and stuff in terrain where it's not natural. Um, so if you have a flat landscape, for the most part, I like to keep things the way it should look. I don't like to do man-made berms. I don't think it's bad. And I think um, in some areas we could do it here just slightly just to create a little bit more shape. Um, but I always shy away from that. I always like to kind of work with what I have. That's why I think I mentioned in that water feature video that we did with um, Greg, uh, the pond guy, he did, they did a beautiful job. He and his designer, Brian, beautiful job. But I was tentative because I don't like the look of when people bring in tons of rocks where there are no rocks in, my, I mean, there's no boulders, no rocks in my landscape, and there's nothing about our surrounding area that has those. So when you bring it in, it's definitely brought in by like just man-made and so it looks less natural. And so I was, I expressed that concern and they did a beautiful job incorporating those stones into our landscape for that little pondless waterfall. I was really pleased with it. So like I said, I mean, it can be done. I'm just not as experienced with that kind of thing because I've just always shied away from it. Rose said, do you always burn or have you considered composting? Uh, we are working on a composting system. We will have one in the back corner of our property um, and we are not putting it right up against a neighbor's house. I know that has been kind of a concern of everybody's. Um, also, if you're doing composting correctly, it doesn't smell. Um, so that shouldn't ever be an issue, but we- Not to say that we will do it correctly. <laughs> well, that's, that's very true. Um, I think that your balance can get off, but you can quickly fix that though. It's not something like we're not gonna throw stuff out there and then just leave it be and not ever go out and see what's going on there. So if there's ever a problem, we'll be able to fix it fairly quickly, but it'll be in the back corner and we're having this fence, I think it's 90, 95 feet, I can't remember, wide. We're having it built out there and behind it, there'll be the composting system and then all of our pallet storage. And we're gonna put it on this end. So the end that's away from our neighbors. So it'll be quite a good distance away from our neighbor's homes. Uh, Wanda said, will you guys move the tall arborvita growing in the fence? It seems kind of out of place and takes away from the view of your house. Most likely, yes. That's bothered Aaron for since day one. This arb right here. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's like, oh, let's get rid of that. There's no balance. It's driving him nuts. We probably will. And Clint says, what kind of drone does Aaron use? Uh, Mavic. A Mavic? Mavic 2 Pro. Mavic Pro 2? I don't two? even know. It's two so Pro? confusing. You've got the, it linked in our um, equipment, right? 
Yeah, I think I do. So maybe we can link that? Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of pages and videos to link to this video. Yeah. <laughs> LB said, exciting times indeed. Help me understand why you're removing your beautiful lawn up near your house. Are you putting in a different kind of grass? You know, the reason why we decided to do that is that we're having some water issues up here um, to where we have a lot of flower beds here that aren't uh, accessible by our drip system. And so they're just overhead watered, which we want to remedy. We're also going to be possibly building on a uh, wraparound porch at some point. And so we're gonna widen things out. Uh, and I do have quite a bit of weeds <laughs> in this grass up here. Um, so there's a lot of spurge, a lot of clover, and we're not exactly sure what variety it is because we didn't plant it. And then there's a spot underneath our ash tree that's uh, really splotchy. It's, uh, it looks like the same grass seed that was used in the whole grass lawn was used under there too. And we need a different variety of grass that can handle the amount of shade that that area gets in order for it to look full. So we just decided, you know what, there's really not that much grass up here. While we're at it and we're pulling the fence out and you know, pulling out other, like this big old, almost dead lilac and getting rid of some other things. We may as well just remove sod and just seed it all together at the same time. So everything looks unified and we're not dealing with old, old issues and we can move water lines as well. Uh, Jeanette said, which way will the garbage truck travel to access the new garbage dumpster and easily turn around? I'm guessing that the garbage truck will come down and actually turn left instead of continuing straight. We've already talked to him about it. He, I think he's already picked up once or twice since we had the new enclosure put there. But he'll come down and make a left where the new lane is going to be. And then he'll be able to make another left, go straight in, into the dumpst, dumpster to pick it up. He'll be able to empty and then back straight up. And then I think he'll be able to back up really easily. I think it's going to be uh, even more open than this other area was. Uh, your girl from Worcester said, how will you handle snow in the gravel driveway? How will you clear it out or do you just drive over it as you can? When it's not very deep, we'll just drive over it. If it gets really deep, Aaron will probably have a real good excuse to buy a snowblower of some sort. Right? We don't... Well, that's why I want to pave it. I want to pave so that you can plow or just snow blow really easily. And you know, honestly, like pavement is nice. I'm going to give, I'm going to give you that. Like it's nice because it's um smooth one you also don't need to create a barrier between asphalt and the grass whereas if you have gravel and grass it's never straight unless you have some yeah. type of a barrier and i don't like the way that it looks in the very beginning when it's so dark but like our lane right now is so pleasing to look at it's like light gray yeah. it just kind of blends in and so it would be nice for benjamin and baby girl to have a place to ride their bikes no Sorry. i'm not <laughs> i'm not waffling <laughs> but you know i love the look of gravel I like the look, or I like the, the, whoa, hey, hey you two, quit, Cheddar, quit it, jeez, he's always instigating some sort of fight. You were just sitting here all innocent, huh? Um, so I like the look of it, I like the fact that you can reform it, so like if we decide, Aaron, and I think you kind of agreed with me, maybe, in the beginning, like with this new lane, if we need to reroute it a slight bit. It's way easier because since this is all brand new, if we need to do more water lines or we decide, oh, like this needs to be a little bit shape different, we can figure all of that out over the next few years and decide exactly where it needs to go before we do something that's more permanent. Mm -hmm. He agrees. I like the sound of it. The sound of gravel? Yeah. Like that's when, you're weird. On the, when you're on the gator and you can hear that like little crunch. I like that. That's weird. It's not weird. That's not weird, is it? Uh, Bubblegum Jones says, are you going to consult your neighbors before you make compost area near your backyards? Will it smell? I just addressed that. Uh, DH said, don't run over the parsley. I know it's still standing out there. Chad totally missed the parsley, which is awesome. Would you ever consider putting in a pool? No. Would you? Yes. No, maybe not here. Maybe yeah. not on this property, uh -huh. but having a pool would would be nice. Certainly in our area, where it gets so hot in the summer, it'd be nice to be able to have a place, but my parents have a pool and I, I am just so fussy about stuff like that, that like considering getting a big rec pond, for example, I would consider that way more than getting an actual swimming pool because ponds can look kind of like natural. They can look a little bit like you, you don't expect to see to the bottom of a pond, but when pools have leaves on the, the surface of the water or any debris on the bottom, it drives me crazy. And I think just knowing myself, if I had a pool, it would like consume me. We have so much wind here, so much wind. It would be a constant mess and I'd be constantly having to mess with it. That's what my parents are doing. They enjoy it though. And that's what makes the difference. Like if I had all the money in the world and I could hire a, a pool boy, 
to, to come and like constantly keep it clean and crystal clear. I would really love it. I love the way they look, but I don't really want to have to have that responsibility myself. And I don't think anybody like you're not nearly as fussy as I am about stuff like that. So I feel like I would be doing a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So I try to be smart about what kind of things I add in that I know I'm going to be needing to fuss with the most. Yeah. So anyway, plus if my parents have a pool, then let them do it. We can go enjoy it. <laughs> they love it when people come out and use their pool and then we can come home and not have to deal with the maintenance. Uh, Carla said, will removing the raised bed around the tree cause issues for the tree's root system? How will you maintain ground level for the tree? So we've talked about the mulberry tree up front. We planted that raised bed that's directly around it. This last year, everything did great, um, but we are going to be removing that whole raised bed. It's only like maybe 12 inches tall, you think? About 12 inches. It's not an, an enormous raised bed, and when we dug in there to plant all those things, I didn't run into any roots, and that's my only thing. I'm like, okay, this raised bed has been around this tree for as long as as long as anybody knows, um, it's, it's been there. And so I was expecting roots to have been growing in the inside or, you know, right inside that raised bed instead of going down. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to wait till spring because I don't want to do it right now when we're getting into, you know, 16 degrees at night and things like that. So I think we will, we may re remove the concrete barrier at this point because right now it just provides this block. It kind of is this visual block when you're coming down the lane. And even though the tree comes out a little bit and you can still see that, I think having that big raised bed gone will soften the whole appearance. So we might take the concrete barrier out now or sometime soon, but we'll go very slow at removing the soil around it. So we'll just start to slough it off a little bit here and there as we feel like it's okay for the tree. Okay, the last video from this week was my thoughts on all the different ways to haul stuff around your property. And this is a video that Aaron really wanted to do because I think, I don't know, his mind runs with lists and um, things like that. Like you really enjoy that organizational part and like kind of going through, he thought it would be fun to start like with where we started at in our garden, you know, using five gallon buckets to where we're at now. We're using a tractor for a lot of jobs and all the stages in between talking about different carts, different buckets, different, all kinds of different ways to get from point A to point B with stuff in your garden and what things have worked for us and what hasn't worked for us. Um, so Marilyn said, this is off topic, but do you force paper whites? I used to, I used to force them all the time just because it was something to do and grow this time of year, but I cannot stand the smell of paper white, so I haven't done it in a couple of years. 603 Gear said, one request please, can you please, please, please remove the zip tied manual from the tractor forks? Do dude. Well, it's kind of nice to keep it there in case you ever need it. Well, do you need it? Well, you might. You You've used those forks a lot now. If you need to order a park or something for it. Don't we have some sort of folder somewhere with like, Paperwork? Yeah, but if it's just zip tied to it, then you'll always know where it is. Not, not so. What if it rains a lot? It's in plastic. What if it rains a lot? That's a stupid question in our <laughs> yeah, area. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the sun will deteriorate that plastic eventually. And then we'll have like a tattery piece of plastic. No papers because they'll be lost. And then a zip tie. I kind of like it. No, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with this person. Uh, Carmen B said, very helpful information. Thank you. Just curious. I noticed you watering from what looked like terracotta pots during the winter time. Do you ever have them crack? Um, I think we talked about that. I've had two terracotta pots crack throughout my however many years that I've been gardening really heavily. Um, so it does happen. It's a risk, especially to keep terracotta pots out in the winter time if you have severe weather. Um, I usually just you know, risk it because terracotta isn't super expensive to replace and typically I have pretty good luck. Uh, Demi said, why don't you use the garden supply cart for display purposes, like fill it with pumpkins and a scarecrow autumn display or even a winter display? And I think that's a really sweet idea. I think that's a really perfect way to use a cart like that, especially if you get one that's brown, like brown stained um, or like light wood stained. So it looks kind of natural and then everything in your um, display can really shine. I think that'd be so pretty. But honestly, at this point, I'm like, where would I store that? Do I want to have a prop that big that I'm just using for display purposes maybe once, possibly twice a year? Um, but I think that that, for me, that's like the best use of it right there, the best suggestion. Uh, Maria said, would it be okay to use the Gorilla carts for your pots since they can hold the weight or can the pots potentially damage them? No, the carts can hold the weight. It's a matter of getting those pots off the ground up onto the cart. You know, having a pot dolly for the pots that weigh 400 pounds is way better because you can tip it. Tipping a pot is easy. You can get underneath it, especially if you have two people. One person tips the pot slightly, other person gets underneath it with the dolly and then you can just tip and move. If you've got a 400 pound pot and a cart, 
then you have to raise it off the ground. You have to physically lift it and get it on the cart and that's not always doable. Uh, Bree said she mentioned so many things that fit perfectly on her kitchen island. I get stuck wondering how big is this kitchen island? <laughs> well, it's like smaller and smaller as my things encroach on it, but honestly, um, like right now I've got my container full of amaryllis bulbs, the six amaryllis bulbs we planted. They haven't started to grow yet, December 1st. So probably won't have blooms until like end of January. Um, and then I have the one uh, succulent arrangement, the eat, drink, and be merry. I have that sitting right next to it. So that's all I have on the island right now. And typically I'm just like rocking through the centerpieces. I just like enjoy one, move it out, put the new one in and move it out. Um, but we use that kitchen island as a catch-all. It is a constant edit process in our kitchen because there's so much going on all the time and I'm just as bad as everybody else, but I come in with all my junk, I set it down and I move on to the next project to where like we get three or four projects worth of stuff sitting around my centerpieces on that island. That's off topic, but there really usually isn't a lot of space on that island because there's just so much junk all the time. Uh, Sherry said, how fast does the John Deere Gator go? Does it top out at 15? I forgot to mention that. Yeah, it tops out at 15 miles an hour, but there's uh, there's something you can do to make it go faster, and I've got the guys at John Deere working on it. Uh, it's like an they, override of some yeah, kind. Yeah, it's an override of some kind, but it's it's do sanctioned you, by John Deere. Do you really, I'll find out. Do you really want to have it go faster? It's kind of nice. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to have a higher top speed. I mean, we drive it down our lane to get the mail, and usually the speed is perfect. And honestly, for me, having Benjamin, uh, who loves tractors and cars and... He loves buttons and all that stuff. I thought, well, he's, he's watched pretty darn close all the time. But I mean, you know, stuff happens. So I thought if, if it ever, if he ever got on there and somehow figured out how to turn this on, I would much rather have something that tops out at 15 than that tops out at 45, <laughs> you know? Um, so part of that makes me feel better. I also meant, forgot to mention the battery life on that thing, which we are gonna do a rev review video of it anyway, but it lasts us for several weeks, like two to three weeks, and we use it pretty hard, so. I really like it. And that's it, you guys. That is it for today's recap video. Thank you so much for watching. The sun is out. I'm gonna go out and do some winter containers. I feel like I'm a little late getting this all done this year, but you know what? It is what it is, and I'm going to utilize every ounce of sunshine we have. So I hope you guys are all having a great day and have a great week, and we will see you in the next video.